What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, November 13th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Rogue One at Gary Witta. Hello, good morning. Hello. It's been a while. It has been. I've missed you. What are we doing? We're touching. Just, We're just touching. touching. We're just touching to be Tenderly. friends. Just let it happen. You know what I mean? Oh. That's how it is. Yeah. Oh, get a little chill. <laughs> I know. Your hands Look, are warm. Mostly because your hands are cold. Yeah, yeah, my hands are so cold. Your hands are so warm. Are you, are you cold-blooded? I am. Yeah. 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 That, must, that must not be fun for Jen. No, well, you know what I mean? She stuck around. She, yeah. she knew she was getting into. You know, she's she other stuck qualities. Yeah. Yeah, I do the thing where I'll lay on my hands before I try to touch her. I know I'm a nice guy. If you <laughs> lay on my hand <laughs> before idea. I try to touch her. The idea of walking into his house, he's just laying. Oh, I, hey, I all wanted all to hug my wife. Sorry, I'm just laying on the couch, rub my hands against the thing. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Gary, how you been? I missed it's you. Good. It has been a couple. It has been a couple of weeks since we hosted together, I know, right? Because right? I was, definitely wasn't here last week because I was in New York. Yeah, you were out there writing that. Uh, doing things. You're working on the Friends. Doing, you're working on the new Friends the show. Fr- I read the Friends about. reunion. Yeah. yeah. And then the week I was, I, I saw that story, and then I was bummed to see that it was just a Rumor. like get sitting. Well, no, not just that, but it, the, it's a reunion in that. Even if they do it, it will just be them sitting around on stage talking about being oh, really? friends. It won't actually be like I saw the a, like a like a reboot. Like they're they're oh, coming back no, together. I thought I, Hollywood Reporter made it sound like today like they were still trying yeah, to get a well, show together. Clickbait headline, bro. Damn I don't. But I don't think they'll ever. Well, I read actually, the IG I don't think and they'll ever actually of it. revisit it like narratively. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it's been good. You know, I got my Disney Plus hooked up. Who we? Um, uh, Rogue One's not on there. I see. Huh? It, it is on there. They need to pay you more, huh? It's on there. Damn, it's I, on I, there. I can't keep in track 4K of what's going on for there. the first time. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I tell you what, I've been watching mostly. So I'm mean, obviously only come out. Yes, I haven't watched all of it, but I've been watching uh, the National Geographic stuff. Is great. Uh, Have you seen this movie Free Solo? Yes. Fantastic. Very good. What a movie. Yeah, I'd never yeah. seen it. Yeah. I'd heard it was good. Yeah. Watched it last night. Incredible. Yeah. Indeed. What's this red box you got? You want to do this right now? I do want to do this right okay, now. Okay, so it's charitable season, uh-huh. as you know. Oh, uh, yeah. You just did your uh, 24 hours, right, for the big, beautiful kids. The big, beautiful kids. It's, all... it's extra life season. It's desert bus season, child's play season. Everyone's putting their hands in their pockets. Everyone's getting know. charitable. Yeah. So Leah and I. Your wife. Uh, my wife, of course, asked ourselves, how can we do our part? And specifically, how can we leverage the phenomenon, the worldwide se- sensation that is Space Rocks? Right. How can we bring that to bear in a charitable way. Sure. And so at PAX, we got together with these, this really cool organization called Stack Up that you mm-hmm. may have heard no of. No well. Stack Up is a, tr- is a terrific organization, basically a, a video game-centered military ch- charity. And what they yep. do is they, they support our active service and retired military in many different ways. They will send care packages of video, video games uh, out to you know um, our service people who are deployed overseas, give them something to do. Um, and, more, and perhaps even more importantly, like after they're, they're done with their deployments, they provide kind of mental health counseling and all yep. kinds of stuff like that. Their big thing is like preventing, uh, combating like veteran PTSD and preventing veteran suicides, which is a big issue, as you know. And mm-hmm. so they do really tremendous work. So Leo and I got talking with them at PAX and we said, hey, we have this new thing called Space Rocks. What if we did a special stack up charity edition of Space Rocks? And, and they were like, oh, Space Rex, sounds interesting, must be educational. They say, yeah, it sounds <laughs> great, right? And then we explained to them what it is, and they went, oh, maybe, well, maybe not. I, said, no, I don't no, want to team no, up no, trust thing. me, it'll be good. No um, rules. So we did it. As you know, uh, at PAX, we had the original version of Space Rocks, and it, so we had 100 copies. It sold out. It was a big thing. Yeah. Uh, and we've made 100 more. Uh, and here it is. Space Rocks, Red Alert Edition, in association <laughs> with Stack <laughs> Up. Uh, new packaging, available. This is hold the key. Ava- oh, do I have to hold- yeah, well, can't yeah. you just move the fucking camera? No, look, it's one man over there at the control hold it up. desk. Can you even got robot it. cameras over there? Um, no. New, new, re- new red packaging. Did I get bumped uh, off the side? Is my quote gone? Check it out. No, your, your quote's been replaced by a Stack Up. Yeah, no, the I CEO of yeah. Stack Up. I know Steven. Uh, special red rock. Wow. If you're reading the instructions about how significant If you get that, that one, it wins. For, for even more sophisticated and new uh, tactical gameplay. Hold on. Oh, you don't have the instructions in I there. don't have the instruction card Does in the there instructions right still insult me? Yes. God damn it. Yes, we'll be, keep, we'll be keeping that the same. For, okay. um, crucially, this is the first time you can actually buy Space Rocks online. Sure. Uh, which well, is very it's illegal cool. in most states, so it's helpful. That well, I, it and, and as, as it should be. And, and, let, and let me again make, take the opportunity to say you should not actually play this don't game. Play Under Space any Rocks. circumstances, that's made clear in the packaging. Yeah. Uh, you can get this for 25 bucks. And if you like Space Rocks, but you don't like me, you don't like the idea of enriching me, and that is a legitimate demographic. 100%. Uh, what, I, what I would say is... <laughs> what, 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 I, what I would say is, um, this is the version of Space Rocks for you. Because we make no money from this. Mm-hmm. The, the, our unit cost on this is about $9 a box. Sure. We're selling it online at legionagary.com for 25 bucks. We'll take our costs back. The remaining $16 
goes directly to stack up. That's great. Gary. So here is your opportunity to own a piece of history, own your very own special limited edition copy of Space Rocks Red Alert edition available online at legionagary.com for the first time and it's all for charity mate it's all for a good all for a good cause so stick your hands in your pocket get charitable this holiday season we put 50 up for sale on wednesday night they sold out almost immediately and so we're now doing a second run we're going to do 50 more some of those are already pre-ordered out i think there's maybe like 25 or 30 copies left sure go to legionagary.com get one of them now before it's too late be a part of history. Be a part of charity. Help out. Help our uh, service men and women. One hundred percent deployed across the globe and here at home. I was. What more could you? It was well need? documented on many an Instagram how I at PAX heckled people buying space rocks. Mm. You know what I mean? I well, actually you stood, should. I mean, it's I a really stood at your booth trying to talk to them out of it. Right. Yeah. This is the first time it makes sense. Because yeah. sure, you're going to buy this. It's worthless plastic. It's a dumb idea from Gary Widow. Yes. You're going to throw it And all it those away things are still months. true. But now the money goes to charity. So hey. Now the money goes to charity. And again, it all goes to charity. We're not make a penny off this one. We figured out our unit cost down to the sure. penny. And in fact, then, in fact, then we rounded it up. It was like $8.80 something cents. We rounded it up to nine for our, um, for our cost. No, it was like... Yeah, that's right. Eight, so you can't eight, even keep eight, it straight. Eight, can't eight, even keep eight, it straight how like he's that. making how much money so off of this. So $9 for our cost, $16 to stack up. So I think we actually make like 12 cents a box or something like that. You know, maybe we can make... I'll have Kevin check your books for you. <laughs> All right. Kevin, get in there. I want to know how much stack they're up making Stack up Red Alert Edition, LegionofGary.com. Support Stack Up. Support a great charity. Uh, that's it. That's my bit. I'm done. You All right, then. Let's it. talk about Pokemon reviews. Human head closing, but Bethesda saving them. But it's even more complicated than that. In Death Stranding, slaying in Japan because this... It's kind of funny games daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can give us your questions, comments, concerns, and everything under the video game sun. Then tune in to watch us record it live, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. So we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you it's official it's a new kind of funny merch day you can go right now to kind of funny.com slash store you can buy the coffee cup that I've been drinking out of for many a week now. You can buy this brand new crew this neck is nice. sweatshirt. This is like a it, like a higher level of couture. If than you, you had are a podcast listener, as always, I urge you to put on your emergency flashers and stop in the middle of the road. Open up your uh, YouTube app, go there, or just go to <laughs> kindoffunny.com slash store. This shirt is the first adult piece of apparel we've worn, oh. where you could wear this to a church function. You could wear it for a night out with the lads. You could buy four of them for your out, your your entire family, and everybody could wear them. And it doesn't look like, hey, why are you a billboard for Connect Four in the KFA? Right, or why are you walking around with a thing that says video games are cool? By the way, I get a lot of compliments on that video games are cool. T-shirt. It's a great shirt. There's, yeah, a, whole, there's a good, it's a good conversation. If you haven't looked, Kevin has it up right now. We have a whole bunch of newest. But this new is definitely merch. a class. This is definitely a, like. This sweatshirt is like a classier category of, of, of apparel. Yes, this is adult clothing. We have an adult clothing. Like the the, the rest of it clothing. is all t-shirts. This is apparel. Yeah, this... Ooh. Right? Gary, you like I that? I like that a lot. Yeah. So go check it out, please. Kindoffunny.com slash store. Embroidered up here, KF. Then down on the little... Si- little down here, it's got a KF. I like you got, got, got them available our, in the big boy sizes. There, you got something for me there. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about all that. All the way up to 4X. What size do you rock in these days? I usually wear an X. Depending on how it's cut, either an X or a 2X. Okay. I got a big, big tummy. Next, well, don't we all? Next piece of housekeeping. Uh, Thursday is tomorrow, and its schedule is nuts. Uh, we're doing something different tomorrow. Of course, XO19 uh, is tomorrow, the big Xbox conference from London. Oi, mate. You know what I mean? Don't, don't. Maybe it's Paris. I actually, no, it's London. It's London, right? Yeah, it's London. Just like Gary. If it would, if, if, I'm just curious. We're in Paris. Huh? What would, no, no, it's London. It's London. It's London. But were it in Paris? Yeah, sure. What would we be hearing from you? Uh, je m'appelle le gouverneur. <laughs> baguette. <laughs> baguette. Oui, oui. Ma bourrée. Oh, 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 oh. They like can offend so many people in such a short <laughs> space of time. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways, that's tomorrow. So our schedule's all messed up. Oh, kind of funny goodness. games daily will be happening 9 a.m. ish. Ash Paulson from Game Explained coming to be on the show with me. However, he booked his flight before we realized how screwed the day was so he's basically landing coming here as quickly as possible and we will be live then at 10 a.m it's the kind of funny screencast all about disney plus so you need to be caught up then then at noon it's the live inside xbox watch along twitch.tv slash kind of funny games oh so you're doing a special disney plus screencast yeah that's cool that's so just everything on disney yeah plus. exactly exactly and then 2 p.m is the games cast 
which I believe you can watch on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. However, I don't know if you can because tomorrow we're do is I am I have official I can tell you I can confirm this I can confirm it tomorrow night Thursday night 9 p.m. Pacific is the embargo for Star Wars yeah. Jedi Fallen Order. Right. So our games cast will be all about that. Much like you were talking, many of you talked on the Reddit. We're going to time our games cast to go live for that. You say nine? Is it 9 p.m. Pacific? Pacific. So I can I could start streaming it at 9 p.m. Pacific tomorrow night. Correct. Yeah, you okay. haven't started a period, right? Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so our review will post then. So I th I don't know. I haven't talked to Tim. I don't know if he's doing like we did. I think we're doing like we did with Death Stranding, where it's just going to be one show, all of us talking about what we've played of it. So. If that happens, then we wouldn't be st streaming it live while we record it. But I don't have clarification on that. And as you know, Kevin and I are the only people who actually care about Kind of Funny and work here and come in early enough to get answers. <laughs> so now that nobody else is here, we'll get back to you on that one. Uh, Joey did put up a post about it, though, so who knows? Anyways, I digress. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Black Jack, Zach Parsley, and Mohammed Mohammed. Today we're brought to you by Brooklyn and Manscaped and Escape the Invasion, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin this show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Four items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Let's start with your Pokemon Sword and Shield review roundup right now. Or at least as of 9.48 a.m. Pacific time on Metacritic. It is has an 81. IGN gave it a 9.3. Casey DeFrida says... Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield are closer to my dream Pokemon RPGs than anything that's come before. I still like better cutscenes, companion Pokemon, the complete Pokedex, and a more visually interesting wild area, but nitpicks are just not very effective when everything else was such a complete joy to play. The way they respect my time is wonderful, and the removal of monotony from random encounters and other odds and ends distills it down to only the pure and charming fun of capturing, training, and battling wonderful creatures. And hey, if I'm missing any tedious repetition, I can always go back into breeding. GameSpot gave it a 9.0. Uh, Callie Plague says, In collecting, battling, and exploring, Sword and Shield cut out the bloat and focus on what makes these pillars of the Pokemon game so captivating in the first place. You're not held back by overly complicated back-end systems or hoops to jump through. From the outset, you can start wandering the Galgar, the Galar region, uh, seeing its new Pokemon, and trying out its new battle strategies with very little in your way. This leaves you free to enjoy what Pokemon is all about, and makes for an incredibly strong showing for the series' proper debut on the Switch. Uh, Nintendo Life gave it an 8. Uh, Alex Ole... Oh. Oh, no. Only? Only. Uh, says, Pokemon Sword and Shield succeeded in bringing some new ideas to the table, but they're also somewhat guilty of not pushing things far enough. What's done right is done right, but what's done wrong feels like it's come from a decade-old design document. There are moments contained within that, that are the best the series has ever been, but this joy is at times spoiled by contrasting moments that left us disappointed and did not match up with the rest of what the rest of these games can offer. What we've got here is an experience full of highs and lows. From the unadulterated uh, wonder and joy of seeing a brand new Pokemon in a stadium full of cheering crowds to the monotonous and dragged out dialogue we just wanted to skip. The wonders of exploring the wild area feels like the true evolution of the series, but even this brave stride toward forward is balanced out by the inclusion of restrictive and boring routes from ga games of old. Uh, the niggling issues are impossible to ignore uh, then, but on the whole. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield are, are, are impossible to ignore then. But on the whole, Pokemon Sword and Shield is a solid start to the HG, HD generation of Pokemon games. But there's ample room for improvement with the next outing. So, Gary, what I basically could, from those three reviews, uh, and summaries of those three reviews, could say is, it is exactly what everybody expected. Yeah, I mean, is, was it ever really going to be a surprise? I mean, I guess there's a, there's a chance it could have been bad. But it sounds like I mean, is there like I don't. I mean, it, pretty much every main line Pokemon game is a solid entry, right? At least a solid entry, yeah. Right, and this yeah, is I that. Agree. It's another. It's another good, perhaps very good, entry in the Pokemon series, which is which is exactly what we have come to expect. Riot goes woof. I'm kind of funny. No, on patreoncom slash kind of funny game says, "Hey, Greg and Widow, happy Wednesday." Pokemon reviews are coming out, and despite everything we've been hearing about cut features, Pokemon, etc., I'd say the game is reviewing fairly well, sitting at around an 80 on Metacritic. Do you think reviewers are giving the game a pass on some things others would get docked for simply because it's Pokemon, or was the fan outrage making things seem worse than they actually were? You saw this, people, the audience super mad about, like, they cut, the, the Pokedex wasn't there, and the Pokemon Bank wasn't there, the trending hashtags against Game Freak, all these different things. I did see a couple of uh, YouTube 
uh, grumblers yeah. out there grumbling as they do. Uh, as is their want. Yeah. Um, and actually, in, the, in that vein, can you bring up Mike Biffle's uh, Twitter while we work on this, Kev? Sure. Sorry, go ahead. Specifically about the fact that it's not a full Pokedex. And in fact, I saw an image where they laid out, like, here's every Pokemon. Yeah. And the ones that are kind of colored in, these are the ones that are actually in Sword and Shield. And there's a lot that are left out, like sure. a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I can understand why some people, like complete, completists, purists, people that just want everything, would, would complain about that. Um, but look, the, ga the game's come out. People are, you know, there's always, there's always grumblings and rumblings before something comes out. I, I, would, I would rather have complaints before the game comes out than after. Yeah, of course. Um, I'd rather have this than Fallout 76. But it's the same thing of, uh, you, Kevin, you missed it by a mile. Sorry. There, go what's down. My, it's what's just this one. He about? gave a great retweet. Go down, go down. You're looking for Pokemon. Keep going. Pokemon. It's very clear. There it is. There it is. See the Pokemon video? Click on that one. Mike Bithel retweeted this one, right? And uh, it was uh, Daniel Ratcliffe, though. But I'm going to read you the initial thing. This is somebody who's angry about this, right? And it has, if you're an audio listener, they're showing a little video of it. Imagine selling a game with slowdown issues and really bad visuals for something on the Switch due to piss-poor optimization and programming and with so many corners cut, it's not even funny. Game Freak should... Game Freaks really should have pushed for a delay. This is just bad. And then it's this video of things getting circled. And like, and then Daniel Ratcliffe, who Mike Bithel retweeted, says this. Game dev tip. If you, if you have to pause the game, zoom in 400% and draw a red circle around an issue before you notice it, you don't get to describe it as insane. That's a good point. I would say in general, just in general, anytime you see a video on the internet that has a red circle or an arrow, yeah, yeah. that's a bullshit video. Yeah, every yeah. single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, this, and this does seem like... This is the kind of thing where, like, if this is the best thing you have to complain about, the game's probably pretty good. That's my thing, where I think it's, you know, there was a couple different... So uh, a, little, a little bit of character pop in? I mean, who, so what? It, the, uh, it, the problem you have here, and I'll let you know right now, is that obviously Gary and I, I think, firmly in the middle of the Pokemon spectrum of that circle of just like, oh, it's Pokemon, whatever. I mean, right? I, listen, listen it, 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 it profoundly affects me because I have a seven-year-old kid. And this is but gonna, I'm saying you're this, not a Pokemon this, this, expert. This is going to take over my house. I, I am kind of a by association. I know a lot more about Pokemon. But do you play the do. games? Do you have a history with the games? Do you know a lot about the games? I, I occasionally play them with my kid, but I'm not a Pokemon person so, in, in any... See, and that's where I am too, where it's like Jen loves Pokemon. So when they right. dropped Let's Go, I played for a while with her and fell off. And she, of course, went through and got everybody and did everything. And like right. Pokemon Go, we played for a while, but I was just out there hanging out. I, don't, I think that you have the spectrum here of, on one side, the hardest of hardcore fans... And then you have reviewers on the other side and the people in the middle like you and me that are just like, I don't know, it's Pokemon, right? Yeah. For me personally, from the moment they started promoting Sword and Shield and Tim saw it, because Tim's my you know bellwether here, when he saw it, he's like, oh, all right, that's new, that's different. It's not what I wanted. I wanted a completely rebooted from the ground up thing. This looks like they're taking, again, baby steps towards doing th something different. The wild area is different, yada, yada, yada. And so right there, immediately, I was like, okay, so it's just going to be Pokemon again. And... Granted, I'm an outsider, you're an outsider to it too. But for everybody watching who is a Pokemon fanatic, this is what I and I think so many millions of other people expect every time they launch a Pokemon game. Every time they launch a Pokemon game, it's all right, cool, it's more Pokemon. It's it's yeah, a little bit the, better than the last, the, probably. The, po the po Pokemon is like the iPhone of the video game world, right? Yeah. Like, it's highly iterative at this point. It's a massive hit. Millions of people love it. It's guaranteed to sell many, many copies. You could, the, the design of it, and the overall kind of approach of what it is is pretty mature at this point. Across many, many iterations, it has, no pun intended, evolved. See what I mean? Yeah, no, enough of Pokemon to get, to get that joke. Yeah. It has evolved into uh, a highly mature form of itself. But it's very, un I mean, you'll, you'll occasionally see like the, the, the side projects, but like the core mainline Pokemon games, I don't think at this point are ever going to be, it's going to be evolution, not revolution forever now. Like, again, just like new, each new iPhone, they don't reinvent the wheel anymore because they can't. There's only so much more you can do. They'll add, a, oh, we've added this little thing and that little thing. And that's what the Pokemon games are right now. Yeah. And, you know, there's always going to be a hardcore, uh, the, the, the thing that amazes me the most is that, and you see this across all kinds of fandoms, and you certainly see it in Pokemon, is that the people who profess to be the most hardcore passionate fans are usually the ones who are least happy with everything. And I get that. If you care about something a lot, if, sure. something, if there's something about something that happens to you that you don't like, you're going to have a passionate reaction. It's just so, prize, it's so surprising to me that when you get to the very, very top end of like people that, c that consider themselves like the elite fanboys or fangirls or whatever those are the ones who usually express their opinions in negative oh well, i don't like this i don't like that and then they, they they don't celebrate the things that they love they complain about the things that they don't like yeah um and i think it's more people that are in the middle of the road that like are more in, that are more likely to go oh isn't that cool i like that that's new and it's like the higher you go up the fandom chain the harder you 
become to please. How, how, yeah, weird. yeah, and how much you criticize it, and how much yeah. you see it, and how much you're going to uh, pick apart. And I'm not even insult, yeah, trying to insult the Kingdom Hearts fans who are just terrible across the entire spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you going to pick a fart and circle things in the right circles and do these different things? Uh, it's an interesting takeaway, Riot, right? Because your question is, do you think reviewers are giving the game a pass on some things others would get docked for simply because it's Pokemon? Or is the fan outrage making those things worse? I think the fan outrage, as you, I think we all could have told you looking at this, was outrageous. You know what I mean? Where it was like, this is way too much. Okay, cool. They're not using the Pokemon bank and they're not putting every Pokemon in there. Like, why would that be that crazy? Now, when you get to a, re a reviewer, there is a different question there of how they're coming at it. Of Are they reviewing this game based as the game it is right now? Are they reviewing it stacking up against where the games have come from and whatever other games done in the Pokemon series and Legacy and all these different things? Not having played it and not being a Pokemon fan, I can't answer those questions. I think, though, with it netting out around an 81 right now on Metacritic, like... That is personally what I expect when I hear there's going to be a new Pokemon. And sure, I expect the nines. I expect people to be like, this is exactly what I wanted. And like, I think it was Casey at the very front from GameSpot saying this was the Pokemon. Yeah, this is the Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield are closer to my dream Pokemon RPGs than anything that's come before, right? Like, that's awesome. And I'm glad that's there for her. And I think I look at it, it looks like another Pokemon game for me. And this is the score spectrum I expect. You know, what I find surprising is that you talk, we talk about a lot of representation in mm -hmm. games these days. We talk about in representation in game reviews. I noticed there was, a, there was a thread going along when Death Stranding came about. There weren't many reviews from women or from people of color. And again, that's, all, that's a very valid, very valid conversation that we should be having. Sure. I think there's a representation problem with Pokemon reviews. Mm. Uh, I don't know how many there are out there. We've certainly read a few. There's enough for a Metacritic average. How many of those reviews do you think have actually been written by, or at least informed by, the core market for this game, which is 10-year-old kids. Mm. Why don't you ask, like, all, all, all of these grown-up men and uh, boys and, and women who are playing Pokemon, I get it, That's a, there are plenty of grown-ups who are into Pokemon, yeah. but, like, the main market for, for Pokemon is, like, my kid. I guarantee you she's going to fucking love this game. And sure. I don't and I think that we often don't. I would love to watch like a YouTube video. Like, I understand that a 10-year-old kid is not going to write like the most informed review, but show me like a YouTube video of like here's what 10-year-old kids actually think of the new Pokémon game because that's the market. Right. It's really really weird that there's a, that, that that these things aren't really that we're not really taken into consideration when we when we review these games. You know, it's it's a bunch of fucking neckbeards reviewing these games and that's fine. Plenty of neckbeards <laughs> like Pokémon's. Yeah. But what about the <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's cracking up. You got him. You got me. You got him. I got you. Yeah, yeah. It, took, it took longer than usual, but I got it 30 minutes in and I got you. Um, uh, I, 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 I want to know what kids think of these games. Because but I mean, that's that, the, that, cause that is the market. But here's the argument. I would The counter argument to that first is that I don't think it matters as much because I think kids, are, your, your daughter's going to love it. Right. They're going to love it. Like, right. it's Pokemon. They're going to love it, which right. is why, like, this is why we're at, I hear you 100%, right? And as somebody who worked at IGN when it was, we review everything, and I would give some kids game an 8.1, and they're like, you gave this an 8.1, but Lara a 4.9? It's like, they're, I'm not, they're not trying to achieve the same thing. You know what I mean? Like right. this, Not all games are created equal in this. It is the argument that I think Pokemon, at its core, is a great game. It is a fantastic game. It is an amazing right, right, game, right, right. which is why they don't change things that dra drastically ever. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And but I, I do think that kids who are the target market could have. I, 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 kids aren't like. Kids, it's not that like kids don't have any taste or they don't have any discerning taste. Kids, kids know what they like and they don't like. And I guarantee you that if I after like a week of my kid playing this game, if I say to her, "What do you like and what don't you like?" Yeah, she will be able to tell me what she like, what she doesn't oh, sure, like, yeah. and she will probably pick up on some things that none of the grown-up reviewers did. Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be, I just think it would be an interesting, given given specifically for Pokemon, yeah. which is so heavily targeted towards kids of a certain age, that there should at least be some. And I imagine there is like someone out, some enterprising in person right now is probably shooting a YouTube video. You could of, be twitch.tv slash Gary Widow. Of eight year old, eight year olds playing Pokemon and giving their honest reviews, and yeah. that being that's a useful guide for parents as well. Like, will your kid like this game? Um, it, it's just weird to me that, that, that a game that is so so heavily 
um, aimed at that market. That 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 market is not in any way doesn't seem to be served or considered when uh, all all us forty uh, year old man children write these reviews. Sure, I think you, it depends where you go though. Like I know you, Nicole Tanner, former uh, IGN, yeah. right? She was doing a parenting video game website for a long yeah. time. I think she still is. Sorry, yeah. maybe a podcast now. But I mean, like there are yeah, those there are avenues, there are right? there are resources out there. I, I I wish we saw it a bit covered in the mainstream. Sure, well, that's my only comment. All right, again, go home, and be the change you want to see. You know what I mean? Bring like your daughter in here. Let her review it. Bring like her to Gamescast. That sounds like a lot of work. Bring her in next week for Gamescast. You want it? You want her on Pokemon Gamescast? Sure. I'll bring her in. All right, cool. We're definitely... I mean, if, if you don't want to put her on uh, the Gamescast full-blown, I think Video Game Club for Patreon is going to be Pokemon okay. Sword Shield next sure. time around. Uh, number two on the Roper Report, uh, Bethesda has kind of got human head, but not really. Like, it was a game developer. They don't have a human head or anything. Well, they have many human heads attached to bodies. <laughs> I digress. I'm just going to read the press release. <laughs> Bethesda Softworks has opened a new development studio, Roundhouse Studios, in Madison, Wisconsin. Staffed by the team from the recently closed Human Head Studios, Roundhouse Studios will immediately be in work on an unannounced projects for Bethesda. Quote, sadly, we had to wind down the business of Human Head Studios and close its doors, which was particularly devastating due to the passion and creativity of the team we'd assembled. I feel like Human Head's been around for a long time. I remember reviewing Human Head games Back in the PC Gamer days. That was 20 years ago. We're going to get to that in a second. Uh, said Chris Reinhardt, creative director of Roundhouse Studios. Uh, we reached out to our friends at Bethesda for help, and they saw the same creativity and passion in our team. With the formation of Roundhouse Studios, uh, Bethesda offered every employee of Human Head a position at the new company. We are excited our team will remain together, pursuing the work we love as part of a company we already know and admire. The developers at Roundhouse Studios represent more than two decades working together on a variety of games and genres, including RPGs, shooters, action-adventure games, and more. The original developers of Prey, the team is well known for developing titles like Dead Man's Hand, Rune, and Rune 2, and Lost Within, and contributing to blockbuster releases like Batman Arkham Origins and Bioshock Infinite. That's what I remember them from, is the developers of Prey. Because that was back during my PC game days. Sure, yeah. Well, we're about to get into that, because this story gets weirder. Uh, we... Well, um, while sorry to hear of the challenges as human, uh, while sorry to hear of their challenges as Human Head Studios, we were excited by the opportunity to bring under the Bethesda umbrella this talented, established development team. Said Todd Todd Vaughn, senior vice president of development at Bethesda. Todd Vaughn, who used to be my deputy editor at PC Gamer. Really? I'm telling you, it all connects. What uh, did you do this? Did you tell him to pick these people up? No, it's just it's funny to see Todd's name because I know Todd from back in the day. He used, he used to work on the PC Gamer team. Man, that me. sucks. He used to be his boss. Now he's so much more successful. I know. Look at that senior vice, vice president, president of development at Bethesda. Uh, we are delighted that the entire staff will remain together and is now part of the Bethesda family. Roundhouse Studios is the second development team to join Bethesda in the last month following the recent acquisition of Alpha Dog Games, a mobile game studio based in Nova Scotia, Canada. So, awesome. This studio closes, right? They just shipped Rune 2. This studio closes on hard times. Bethesda picks them all up, gives them a new name. Silver lining, that's great, right? Here's where it gets interesting we'll continue to. Over at GamesIndustry.biz, I was reading their report on this, right? And uh, Marie uh, De La Sandri uh, says, Human Head Studios was the original developer of Rune and Prey. Prey 2 was famously canceled in 2014 following a contract dispute while the team's 2018 title, The Quiet Man, was critically panned. We all remember Prey 2, right? I remember going to E3 Judges Week. We all saw Prey 2. Everyone thought this looked awesome. They showed it at PAXs. They, everybody thought this game was awesome. Then, if you remember, it was canceled by Bethesda. The contract dispute they're talking about was with Bethesda, the people who just picked them up. Let's go back even further. Now we're in 2012 on GamesIndustry.biz with Dan Pearson's article. A report from an anonymous source has claimed that the reason behind the delay of Prey 2, once thought canceled, is a contract dispute between developer Human Head and publisher Zenimax. Speaking to Shack News, the source said the studio decided, down to, um, decided to down tools in November in an attempt to force Zenimax to renegotiate contract terms. During this period, many developers were laid off with the expectation they, uh, being that they would be rehired once the project began again speculation is now rife that the game will be moved to another developer for completion again remember this just game just gets canceled and somebody they make a different prey they dump all this yesterday bethesda addressed fears that the game had been canceled reassuring fans that it was still in production despite a delay into 2013 bethesda also issued a statement claiming the game was not up to standards as yet needing more work 
Quote, development of Prey 2 has not been canceled, but the game will not release in 2012 as planned, the publisher explained. The delay is due to the fact that the game development has not progressed satisfactorily uh, this past year, and the game does not currently meet our quality standards. Prey 2 has shown great promise, and we regret disappointing our fans. fans. We have made a substantial investment in game development to deliver the experience fans want. We are determined only to release the AAA game fans rightfully expect and are unwilling to compromise our quality standards to meet the release schedule. That, that quote in particular feels very amusing in the light of recent Bethesda game releases. Doesn't it? <laughs> different, it was 2012. Right. Different time. Different Gary. time. Different time, Gary Witta. What a weird... What a weird wow. cycle. It sounds like there, there was some animosity there several years ago, but it's all blown over. Um, sure, people come and go. Changes to happen. You know what I mean? You, you, know, you know they're a talented studio. Again, Prey 2 looked great from what we saw. That was a vertical slice. Could have you, been garbage. You've got a developer in trouble. Bethesda looked at them, saw a, saw a business opportunity. And obviously, you know, it's a nice thing. They're obviously not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. So they're seeing an opportunity to make money. But yeah. all these people get to keep their jobs. It's a new studio. So it's just a positive story. It is. It is. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not, I'm not going that way. I'm just saying that it's just a weird thing to get all the way over there, right? And I like the idea that now that, of course, Bethesda has tried to make Prey happen again since then, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, if I, 17. I mean if I, if, you know, five years, is that's a lot of water under the bridge, I think. Sure. I'm, I'm not, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, like I saw on, uh, I looked at Reset Era and their thread about this, and it was very much like, Bethesda always wins in the end. They tried to kill him <laughs> back in the day, and here they are picking up the pieces, and yada, yada. I'm not twirling my mustache. It's like, what right, a, right. Right, right. Small world, but again, remember Bethesda after canceling Prey 2 put out Prey by Arcane Studios in 2017. Prey was a cult hit, people really liked it, it didn't sell gargantuan numbers or whatever. But I think it would be cool to see now in the hands of Roundhouse Studios, the original developers of Prey, right? You all liked Prey 2. It would be a cool goodwill gesture, good move to say. Well, maybe they could make a new Prey 2. Hey, everybody, we're back. <laughs> we're making Prey 2. We're like, making another get, Prey 2. Get a good laugh at E3 2021, probably, when you announce that, right? When you get out there. Yeah. I digress. It's something come interesting. Up the video game. You can't play it on paper, the video game industry. I tell you, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, number three, here's an interesting one. Uh, Death Stranding is the biggest new IP launch in Japan in quite some time. This is from Game Data Library on Twitter, who watches all the Japanese uh, sales numbers over there. Uh, what, he, what they did is they put up a, a little chart here saying the biggest IP retail launches in Japan for the generation. Number one is PlayStation 4 Death Stranding with about 186,000 uh, What is that, sales. a day or a week? What is, what, what does I'm that not, cover? I think that might be since launch. No? Okay. Or not to make well the biggest IP retail launches for Japan in the generation. I'm just wondering if that covers the first day, the first week. Uh, you, yeah, I don't have the useful. That'd be a good data point to it have. It would be, but again, I'm just reading off of a Twitter. But that you can I still saw. see comparatively that yeah, exactly. It is because yeah, biggest Death Stranding's one. at 186, right? 180, 186k. Underneath it is Judgment with 153k. Did that come out in the US yet? Judgment. Oh yeah. Okay. It's, you should buy it. I want to check it out. Okay. Uh, Sekiro uh, 151, Bloodborne 151, uh, Arms 122, Day. He's gone. One fourteen. Horizon Zero Dawn. This is number seven on the list. One oh nine, and then uh, Octopath Traveler. One oh nine. And then here's the the Twitter uh, thread explaining this stuff. Launch sales of Death Stranding is the biggest IP launch we've seen this generation yet. Knack doesn't count. Knack, of course, a pack in Japan with the PlayStation Four originally. I thought that was just. I thought that was just a, a knock it. <laughs> if I'm being, if I'm having a free, if I'm being knack. transparent, when I saw it, I was like, "Why is he? Why the dunk on Knack?" And then I was like, "Oh right." <laughs> so yeah, uh, I checked quickly, and I checked quickly, and seems like it's the biggest new IP launch since the original Dark Souls. And if you don't want to count that either, then the original Wii Fit launch isn't very impressive. Launch isn't very impressive, specifically, as the game isn't like Kojima's previous works. Something like Judgment, Sekiro, and Bloodborne borrow heavily from previous titles, while Death Stranding is much more unique in that regard. Note that the new IPs rarely hit that big out of the gate in Japan, and despite having a launch three times as big, Death Stranding has no chance of outselling Ring Fit Adventure. Le legs is what ultimately matters, and I don't expect Death Stranding to have strong ones, though we'll see. But hey, if you somehow wanted to spin Ring this... Ring Fit Adventure was a big hit in Japan? Apparently. Somehow, if you... But hey, if you somehow wanted to spin this negatively, Death Stranding was the worst launch for Hideo Kojima games since Zone of the Enders in Japan, uh, and it's considerably below any Kojima-led Metal Gear Solid game. I get that. Kojima's a brand, but Metal Gear Solid is also a... Had he made Metal Gear Solid 6, that would have been a much bigger hit than this, because, you know, it's yeah. two, you it's two things name, that name people really it. know. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone that... Not everyone who loves Metal Gear Solid knows... 
who Hideo Kojima is. Many Sadly. do, but many yeah, don't yeah. also. Yeah, yeah. So when the next, and obviously they tried to, I'm sure there was lots of, from the creator of Metal Gear and all that kind of, I'm sure they had that everywhere. But like that's, again, that's not always going to penetrate through to everybody. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is, I, I think what it does show is the power of Kojima himself yeah. as, a, as a brand, you know? That he his name alone was enough to make it a relatively uh, well Norman large Reedus' butt Japan. too a lot of Norman Reedus butt in there yeah and all the that BB monster energy drink Mads yeah you started this yet what's your deal no I'm gonna start it this week all right cool you streaming it you gonna stream it no I'm gonna I'm not I'm I'm gonna play I might stream Jedi tomorrow night when the embargo wah, goes wah, wah, in, a, wah, in a craven wah. craven attempt to get some viewers sure anytime I get an embargoed game I only I had it I've had it, the code for a week I haven't I haven't had a chance to excuse me <laughs> <laughs> you got got you. <laughs> Did you get that one, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, we did. Did you get that in your cans? Oh, my God. You like that? You want more of that? Jesus um, Christ. I'm podcasting with Rick. What, <laughs> like, what has happened? No, you know what it is? We've been, we've been, we've been uh, hooked on Luigi's Mansion. I can't, oh. I, I can't say good, enough good things about Luigi's that. Luigi's Mansion. Really oh, fun. It's fantastic. Really fun. It's in my game. It's Are my you game. playing it with your daughter? We've been playing uh, various different versions. Like my daughter and my wife have played. Yeah, I yeah. played with my when my wife did her main playthrough. Yeah, I did. There were some bosses that she was like, I kind of need you to pick up the controller and be good sure. here because it's way easier. To, the, the boss battles are Dude, way easier. The one when you're place. in the when you're in the water against the other guy oh in the water and the spikes. It, yeah. it was driving me crazy. And then when we were playing uh, on and extra the life pool, and the swimming pool, guy. Imran was like, Hold on a second, I can probably. You know, I was like, Oh yes, this is way better. way better Got to it. do it with yeah, co-op. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. That drop in drop out co-op is great. Very nice. Number four on the Roper Report, and finally, uh, Grid on Stadia has this 40-car multiplayer mode, and they're saying it couldn't have been possible anywhere else. This is Alessio Palumbo at uh, WCCF Tech, uh, talking to the developer, shoot. Uh, Kevin, can you give me the Google on that and find out who they're talking to? I didn't write that down, sorry. Sure, I'll check it out. Uh, however, somebody from Grid who's important. Questions look like this. How was your experience with Google Stadia? What would you say are the main differences compared to developing for a console or PC? The developer who Kevin's finding out for me says, Development on any new hardware is always equal parts exciting and interesting. Perhaps the area with the biggest difference was the streaming, but also the ability of Stadia to talk to other Stadia so quickly transforms some ideas around multiplayer. For example, developing a whole new mode for Grid Stadia wishes 40 cars on the track at the same time, something that just isn't possible with other hardware. Um, Keep going. Kevin's bringing it up if you're not new. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Green, Development Director for Grid at Codemasters. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, go- this is back to the interview. Uh, Google also discussed the possibility of exploiting elastic, elastic uh, compute rendering to deliver much better world simulations and games. What do you think about this potential opportunity for developers? Uh, Mark says, I think it sounds fantastic. Personally, I love open world games, and the idea of making these even more immersive is great. With our 40 car mode, we've probably only just scratched the surface of what Stadia is capable of, and I'd love to have more time with the design designers and programmers looking at just how they can utilize the extra power. Back to the interviewer. Overall, would you consider Stadia as next-gen as the upcoming consoles from Sony and Microsoft? Mark says. New hardware always gets us excited. It doesn't matter whether it's local or remote, and we know we can rely on all the platform holders to come up with amazing new abilities, which designers will hungrily try to understand and use uh, them to create great new features within games. Focusing on Stadia, I think their integration with YouTube may prove to be a master stroke, leading us to new ways to interact with games. Gary Witta. We are days away from founder packs for Stadia shipping. Yeah. You've pre-ordered one. How are you feeling? I'm thinking about canceling. Ooh. It. No! That launch lineup didn't get you. The launch lineup kind of kind of killed it for me. Mm-hmm. Oh. I've I've been excited. Uh, if you go back, uh, go, go go back and get the receipts. Go go look at uh, my past uh, appearances on on Games Daily. Uh, and in co- and, and in the private conversations I've had, I've, I've been a, I've been very pro Stadia. Yeah, you love I've tech. Said, I've said a, I've said a, a number of times. I think that Stadia is going to uh, overperform and surprise people because I'm a big fan of the. Te- I do believe the technology is is great. The engineering is solid, and it's basically going to do. It's going to deliver what it promises to do from a technical standpoint. Yeah. I think that's going to be very impressive to many people. The problem for me and this may not be a problem for many other people but the problem for me is someone who like buys and acquires a lot of games i looked at the lineup and there's literally nothing there that i don't one. already own yeah. or I am, I am not interested or, or interested in playing there's like one or two little indie titles that are exclusive to stadia i looked at them eh, 
it's hardly a hundred and thirty dollar reason to buy something. Yeah. And then Assassin's Creed, Mortal Kombat Eleven, Destiny. I've I've got all these fucking games. Yeah. Yeah. Red Dead. I've played played them all. Like yeah. so. What what is that? Literally, if I buy it, if I if it shows up for me on day one, for me, literally, what am I going to do with it? There's I mean, nothing for me to play on it. Here's literally the, nothing. Literally, if you don't do it, Gary, and when it fi- when you finally decide to bite the bullet and go play some Stadia. You're gonna have to be Gary underscore Witta because somebody will have already grabbed Gary Witta. Oh, there is. That's that. what they're doing. That's there what they're that. getting. They're charging you the hundred thirty. I mean, so that's get- the other thing. I am an early adopter. I've got more money than sense. I buy a bunch of stupid <laughs> shit that I don't really need. <laughs> yeah. But this is this is really pushing. It. Like, look, I've got more money than sense, but that doesn't mean I've got no fucking sense at all. Yeah. And I look at Stadia and I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, there's nothing for me to play here at, on day one. Maybe I can get maybe I can get something out of streaming it a little bit so people can see what the Stadia experience is like. Yeah. Maybe it's something I can do for my Twitch channel. And then but then like in terms of actually like what I'm, what am I playing tonight? The Stadia has nothing to offer me. Yeah. You know, there's there's all kinds of other new, you know, I can play Pokemon, I can play Jedi, I can play Modern Warfare, I can play Death Stranding and all the other platforms that I own. This is offering me nothing. Leah's fucking got 400 hours in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. What's she going to do with it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know? If it was cross, if you could bring your save over, right? Now, again, most people don't have that many games and, and, and you know, hey, if you've not played it, it's new to you. I get, yeah, yeah, I, totally, I get totally. that. But like, could they not have launched with, like, could they not have secured at least one I big... talk about it all the time, man. Think about what that call was like when id Software rang them up. It was like, hey, oh, yeah. Doom Eternal is yeah. gonna be delayed, and they must. Right. It, Stadia must have been like. But imagine if they had put all their chips. Imagine a different universe, Greg. Yeah, I'm here. Where they had, where Google had driven every fucking Google cash truck that they had up to the front door, and said to Kojima, "Death Stranding is gonna be is gonna launch exclusively on Stadia." Yeah. Just think about what what that would have done for them. Sure. You know, or Jedi Fallen Order, or something that like some, that something new that people are actually excited to check out. That what I th- would what I think would have been a very very different story. Yeah. It's a bunch of old shit. It's it's a new way to play a bunch of old shit right now. Right now, I think that over time that's going to change. The technology is going to get better. The game library is going to get better. Of course, I I still stand by my original prediction that Stadia is, you know, people say, oh, Google, they drop things all the time. Is it even going to be around in six months? Is my controller going to be, you know, an ornament in six months because Google's moved on to the next thing? I honestly don't think so. I do think they're in this for the long haul. I think it's going to take them, you know, I saw um, uh, Patrick Klepek over at Vice the other day looking at the lineup saying, maybe they should just call this an early access launch. Cause this Dude, is not I've been ready. seeing that on this show for months now. Uh, maybe I, weeks it's now. Too, it's, too re- it's too late for them to reposition once they did, Once they said that, oh yeah, the controller is not is only wireless with the TV with the uh, right. Google Chromecast at, right. at launch. Right. That one I was like, and then you get this lineup, like, why didn't you fucking call this early access? Because even here, right, uh, uh, we have the grid guy talking about the fact that I think their uh, integration with YouTube may prove to be the master stroke. Is that's not even available at launch, right? Like that's not there yet. Look, I don't, know, is, I don't it, know why they just didn't give themselves another six months in the oven on this. They'd still beat out all the next generation of consoles if they came out like mid next year. They, like, what, they don't is even there a need reason to do that. It had to if, come out at this time. Try to get ahead the holiday season. I, you wonder too it? if they thought they could hit this. If they thought they'd have everything up and running. If they thought they'd have all their functionality ready to go. Look, I mean, generally, I would say generally in video games, especially anything that has to do with a live service or an online connectivity. Yeah. You shouldn't. You should never buy anything at launch. Yeah. Unless unless you really want to experience the game the worst it's ever going to be. If you say, I really want to experience the worst version of this game. I want to live through the pain, so I'm like proven to be a real fan. Then then by all means, buy online games at launch. Otherwise, fucking wait. Let other people be the guinea pigs. Yeah. Let other people be the beta. That was my thing. I've talked about it before. Here, it's a tired thing. Just to recap, if you're new for some reason, you wandered in this far into the episode. Like, I bought it knowing it was going to be not the best at launch, right? But right. I didn't think the launch would be like this week. But it's it also, weak. I bought it with the idea knowing full and well when they started talking about their games, even before they talked about the launch lineup, when they were talking about their showcasing, that I was buying this knowing that it probably wouldn't get real use until next year. Right? That I support streaming, I want support uh, streaming, and all yada yada yada. I'm excited for the 2020 games that will be launching day and date with it. That's when there's an actual conversation. I mean, look, they, look, Google wants to position this as the next gaming platform, right? They want to be, they want to say, hey, the next generation is essentially. PlayStation 5, yeah, yeah. Xbox Scarlet, and Stadia. Our they want to be up there. All oh, right, so fine. But if you want to be if you want to be in that conversation, you have to be judged by the same standards. Sure. If Xbox 5, so if PlayStation 5 came out today or Xbox Scarlet came out today with that lineup, 
it would be a fucking joke. And here's my problem, Gary. You're, and I've been of the mindset too. Uh, you know, and I, and we've talked. To, I've had uh, Jack Beeser from Google Stadia on. We have cool friends and stuff. And I b- truly believe how much he believes in it. And if he believes that much, I think Google. Yeah, I know. And too. I think that goes through. Phil Harrison's a friend of mine, and I think that they all have the best intentions, and they're doing amazing stuff. And I think that Google Stadia will eventually be something great. But this. But here's launch, my problem. This here's my problem. Is, is weak. And here's the problem is that everybody who wants to beat this thing to death, and there are lots of them on the internet who want to fucking tar and feather the streaming technology to begin with, launching this weekly fucks you for the future. You only get one chance at a first impression. Right. And like this is going to be... Xbox One turned it around and it is a great thing. And so It doesn't matter. They had a terrible launch. No. Everyone turned and it around. And, and, and they're way behind success. Sony because they fucked up that launch. It doesn't matter that if in 2020 Google Stadia is going to be like, it's working and it's great and it's blah, blah, blah. The narrative and the reviews... Like when IGN puts up their review of Google Stadia and gives it a 6-2... Six, you know, I'm, I'm totally pulling numbers out of mass. Maybe it'll be in nine. Maybe it all works perfectly. I mean, I guess the counter argument is no, no, the, today nobody really remembers that World of Warcraft was rough as fuck at launch, right? Mm-hmm. But here's my problem: is that this isn't happening in a vacuum. This is happening with Xbox doing XCloud, and if you ask me, doing XCloud right of cool. XCloud is in beta right now. You can get it right now in beta, and like so. Your, everyone's expectations are so low. They're right. giving away games. You're playing on the xCloud beta. Right. You get Gears 5, right? right. You're ready to go. Right. And they're talking about tomorrow um, at XO19 that there's going to be big uh, xCloud news, which I was like, ooh, maybe it'll be a release date. And then it was Snow White Mike, an uh, Xbox expert, who's like, maybe it's going to be that they're just expanding it. It's a public beta now. Everybody can get it. This Everybody would be a great week to drop some amazing xCloud news and piss on Stadia. And that's bit. my fucking thing. If you, if Stadia drops and is 130 bucks, now granted, you're getting the, uh, you get the founders thing, so you get the Stadia pass, you get Destiny for free, you get the Chromecast, you get the controller. I'm not saying you're just paying 30 bucks for streaming and your username. If, Stadia drop zone is like pfft, it's weak, and XCloud drops with way lower expectations. But holy shit, I'm playing. Everybody's playing Gears Five now for free, and it's great, and it's amazing. Or they are putting a release date on it of like, yeah, XCloud's dropping, you know, in November or I guess December now, and January, February is dropping, and it's going to be there, and you can get it, and it's free. You already have an Xbox controller, you can do this. Like, it's going to be a tale of two things. And if XCloud rips away, if they just pull away from Stadia, it's over, dude. Like Stadia won't be able to get out from underneath that. Because if it is, like, oh, man, you want to play Cyberpunk uh, 2099, right? 2077. I'm fucking up every time. Spider-Man 2099 is what fucks me up. Uh, If you want to play Cyberpunk at launch, guess what? It's here on Xbox, which means it's on xCloud, which means you can play it on your streaming thing. You can have here. Your purchases are all linked together. You want to play it on Stadia? It's not day and date with Stadia. It's actually further out. You know what I mean? Like, that'll just be the death nail for this thing. They needed they needed to be way more aggressive with exclusives. Either this would have been compelling if this this lineup, Assassin's Creed, Mortal Kombat 11, Destiny, if that lineup were available in a buffet Netflix kind of thing totally. where you can just pick up and play those games. But even then but it, like, mm-hmm. but it's a storefront, we have to buy them all individually. It's a storefront full of old shit. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. And there's nothing in there like they don't have I mean they'd have a couple of little indie games that are exclusive, but that, that no one gives a shit. I fully expect to get it. Do it. Test it. Does it work? Does it not work? Okay, talk about it on Gamescast. Put it down until Darksiders Genesis. I'm, I like Darksiders Genesis a lot from E3. Uh, it's launching on PC and Stadia and will come to consoles till next year. So I'm like, okay, this is in December. I'll be able to play. I'm like, great. That's a game I'll play on Stadia. I think they needed some kind of killer app. Now, you know, who'd have thunk? If only we'd launched consoles before. The problem, that, the problem that they have is, you know, you can't you can't put a controller and a Chromecast in a box for 130 dollars and then slap a beta sticker on it. I don't think you can get away with that. You could have if, if they would have messaged it that way at the beginning. Hey, we're working on this, and we need you to learn with us. We need people testing it. We need all these different things. You get this. You get the controller. You get your name. You're you're in on the ground floor. Well, actually, you know, you get odyssey for free you get whatever for free there's some rotating game every month we want you testing this thing it would have been like okay cool i bought in knowing that i was doing untested tech i bought in knowing that it was going to be rough i'm not mad at them for this it's just you look at it like oh man what a way to fuck this up like what a way to fuck this up we're no one no who's excited for this why are you excited for it this way I digress. Yeah, they need, I, I, I think the, I think the, the, the media narrative, the press cycle next week when it, oh, when it comes bad. out is not going to be great. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be bad. And it could have again, a, 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 a couple of different moves I think could have could have changed this. Again, I think the fundamental tech, the idea, the concept. Everyone knows the idea is great. That's why that is possible. Everyone's trying to do it. Yeah. Right. Google's first out of the gate with it. They've got quite arguably an engineering 
advantage, uh, advantage over everyone else with their data centers and all their you know online expertise. Google, is, if any company can pull this off, it's Google. And again, I still think that the engineering foundation behind it is really strong. And it is going to seem a bit like magic when you pick up your phone or you, you pick totally. up your, your controller and you go, oh shit, this game's available immediately and there's no installing. No, no installing, no nothing, just, right from purchase to play. I, all of that stuff is great. Um, but that doesn't matter if there aren't if there's nothing you want to play. Yeah. This is the same, you know, it's Xbox One all over again. Where's the fucking games? Yeah. Where's the games? You and I I feel like the best point I made in this, it you got to treat this like a console launch. And that lineup for a, for any other console launch would be considered terrible. Yeah. It's going to be you you it's if the tech works, it's cool to be excited for the tech. It's not cool to be like, "Cool, it works. This is great." Now what? What no, am no, I going no, no, to play on I guess it. if you're a huge Destiny person, there. But I, so I got to decide if I want to cancel the pre-order or keep it in the knowledge. In, in, the, in, in, the, in the again, I'm an optimist about this. I believe that in six months or a year, it's it's going to be good. Yeah. But do I want to pay 130 bucks now for something I'm probably not going to touch? Yeah. For a while. Well, Gary, the good news is that there are plenty of games that want you to touch them, and they're out right now. If I wanted a list of those games, Gary, where could I go? That was a, you threw me there because that was a different kind of segue. Yeah, I, I thought you we were going to go with, well, the release of Google Stadia is still a week away. Sure, That's yeah, a yeah. long time away. That's yeah. how you usually would. I, you, I like to keep you on your toes. You know what I mean? You certainly have. Um, the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts, each and every weekday. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Before I get out today, let me tell you about all. I added a little, little, little. I liked it. A little grace note. In Marvelous. The end Sponsors. We're starting with Brooklyn and making your home beautiful is the ultimate form of self care. You spend a third of your life in the sheets. Don't you want them to be insanely comfortable? This holiday season, maybe it's time to gift the ones you love or yourself with something a little cozier like bedding, loungewear, towels, and more. Lucky for you, Brooklyn is developing or is delivering comfort all season long. These are luxury sheets, robes, loungewear, towels, and more without the luxury markups because Brooklyn was the first direct to consumer bedding company, meaning they work directly with manufacturers and directly with customers. No middlemen, just a great product. Product and service. Uh, they've moved beyond the bedroom to offer essentials for your bathroom, like towels, shower curtains, and bath mats, and even launched an ultra soft lounge wear that makes you feel like you never left bed. This is like softness, like comfort. Who doesn't? Brooklyn has it all. I couldn't recommend their products more. You guys know that I love them. I use them all the time, and they say they're good for graduates, newlyweds, friends, or family, or to treat yourself. For the bedroom upgrade you deserve. Remember, the holidays are upon us, Gary. This is an easy way for you to whip out your phone right now and go. Get 10% off and free shipping anytime when you shop at brooklinen.com. Use the code uh, GAMES. Brooklyn is so confident with their product that all their sheets, comforters, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. To get 10% off and free shipping, go to brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and use the promo code GAMES. Brooklinen, everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Up next is Manscaped. Support for Kind of Funny Games Daily comes from Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the belt grooming manscape offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels jingle balls to the walls fellas listen up untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past gary Witta. it's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season i'm talking about the manscape perfect package 2.0 uh this revolutionary company manscape has redesigned the electric trimmer their lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary advanced skin safe technology so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts it's also waterproof so you can use it in the shower the lawnmower 2.0 comes inside their perfect package 2.0 which makes for a perfect gift this holiday season. It's literally everything you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. And don't use the same trimmer you use on your face as you use on your balls. That's nasty. The Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0 also includes the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant in your armpits. Why aren't you putting it on the smelliest part of your body, Gary? And yes, your balls stink. I don't know yours personally. Wow. That's just where the copy is. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, Mine I mean, don't. you, you got to read the copy. Mine don't because I use it. Today, I, Jen inspected my Manscaped business down there because I did it over this weekend. I talked about this on the Kind of Funny podcast that I Manscaped with it over the weekend. Did it today. And she said, wow, wow, we, wow, we, wow. She was very excited Why with what she saw down there. Why did this many days to check it out? Well, because it's one of those things like, you know, I, like, you know, she actually, we were. First of all, you know, Manscaped immediately run out and be like, look. Well, no, because she was, I forget what she was doing. Oh, she was at Day of the Devs when I did it on Sunday. I see. And then I told her about it maybe Monday at dinner. And then yesterday was a shit show. And then, t- you know, today we were showering together. And she's like, oh, I, she, it was finally dawned on her. Like, right? You say you're showering together? Yeah. Say water, huh? Yeah. All right. You don't shower together? I mean, yeah. Okay. These products smell good. Uh, the perfect package does all that stuff. Uh, it's the season to manscape. 
So get yourself, your dad, your brother, and your friends the best gift of all, the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code games at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code games at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping, manscaped.com. Use the code games. Up next is Escape the Invasion. You've got to check out this game called Escape the Invasion. It's all about immersive experiences, and they just announced the launch of their new post-apocalyptic theme subscription box. Picture this scenario. You're in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world that has been ravaged by a deadly virus inflicted by aliens. Would you survive? With Escape the Invasion, you can find out. Each month, you'll receive a box of clues, physical items, and evidence that will get you closer to survival. It's up to you to piece it all together, solve the mystery, and save humanity. It's been called an escape room delivered to your door where Fallout meets Alien. It's a great way to get off your phones and start connecting with friends. Or if you prefer to play solo, you can interact with their online community, swapping theories and helping each other out. Right now, just our listeners can go to escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames for 20% off their first box. That's escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames for 20% off your first box. Escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames. See if you can survive the alien apocalypse. Again, it's the holiday season. Just buy that and send it to somebody and you're done, Gary. You don't have to think about what to buy people. I hate thinking about it. I haven't put thought into gifts. I hate yeah. it. I saw you today panic and call your wife if you should buy Pokemon Sword and Shield two copies for you and for you guys and the kid. Yeah, oh, I don't know if we should do, or, or we, yeah, if we only get one. Which one do you let me, get? Here's let me hold on. Let me think. Yeah, just buy two. What are you doing? You're both. You play it. She'll enjoy it. You're playing. You're, you're trading the Pokemon with her. She can get to pick which one she wants. I guess. You don't seem like you're psyched. About no, we'll it. probably have to. We'll probably have to do that. Life is a video games expensive hobby. But you're Gary Widow. You know what I mean? You got the, you're making the Twitch money with the train oh, yeah, simulators big, and all that stuff. You got a big, bubble that machine. Big time Twitch money. Out yeah. today, Last Labyrinth on PS4, PC. Mercenary Wings, The False Phoenix on PS4. Spider Solitaire F on Xbox One. Wow. Uh, Hold Down on Switch. Uh, Naboki on PC and Mac. Soko Loco Deluxe on PC and Mac. Incredible Dracula, which is cursed on PC. Uh, the first chapter of The Donnerwald Experiment, a fantasy RPG about nightmares, machines, and self-discovery, is out now on Steam. Beautiful Bricks, the ultimate four-player arcade brick breaker with 8-bit aesthetics, is already out on Steam. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, I, I like a good brick breaker. I, li- I, I, yeah, I used to love um, Arkanoid, Arkanoid yeah, when I was a yeah, kid. Arkanoid's great. Did you ever play, it was originally Magic Balls and they turned it into Magic Orbs? That was a good one. Do you ever play Warlords in the arcade? No, I never played Warlords. That was a good one. It's like a four player, and each one of you, like your bricks were your castle. Oh, no. no, no. And you had to bounce the. the oh, nice, yeah. The, yeah. And you, know, you had to kind of like to get the other players' defenses down. It's oh, good. Uh, this was news to me. I'm not sure if it's news to everybody else, but I thought I'd toss it in. Apex Legends duos uh, on the new World's Edge map is available until uh, November 19th. So if you want to do some duos, do that. Uh, new dates for you. Uh, Monster Jam Steel Titans for the Nintendo Switch is coming as a digital version November 26th, 2019. Physical retail version will be out February 4th, 2020. Let's see what we got here for questions for you, Gary. You know what I mean? Yeah, what do you I'll got? toss you one and two here. Yeah, right, let's go here. Uh, Fendi writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Hey guys, an online retailer that goes by Shop 2 presumably leaked the release date to Dreams this morning with. The artwork of the game. The release date on the tweet is February 14th, 2020, which would have been a week before Last of Us 2's original date. Uh, This tweet's been deleted. I thought about putting in the Roper Report, but who knows what's happening. Uh, My question is, is this release date real? After Last of Us 2 was delayed, Ghost of Tsushima was pushed back later into the year, according to Jason Schreier. So I feel like it does make sense to release Dreams before the big two in a release window, which was originally meant for another first party title. Wait, Dreams isn't out yet? Dreams is out in early access. Oh, it's not not still not officially out. How yeah. many fucking launches has this game had? Uh, well, this it was is, like the I super mean, duper duper beta, and then yeah. this, and yeah. now I thought it was out by now. That's the problem. Dreams has. Why well, it's going to be very hard, I think, to sell Dreams. But the idea here would be that yeah, when uh, uh, kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong. Tell me when Dreams early access happened because I know it was spring of this year. Uh, you get what basically a year of people building stuff in it, making cool levels, doing a whole bunch of cool shit, and then hopefully yeah, you say here it is. It's a full box game. It's got a whole bunch of levels from Media Molecule. It's got all this cool shit and try to sell it that way. I think it makes sense. I think it's a good time frame for it. Get out in that first part of the year. For, there's no slow time anymore. And I think as we've seen time and time again, that first half of the year, especially like spring, January, February, March, people, as soon as game of the year is over, it doesn't matter if the game of the year if, nominees are in your backlog. People immediately start thinking about what's coming. We're back on the right. hype train of what's next, what's next, what's next. Right. You want new things. True. So putting dreams out then would make sense. Uh, Kebab says uh, Dreams Early Access was in fact April 16th, 2019. Yeah, it's so, yeah, been a while. About a year you can get out there of having that. So yeah, that makes sense to me. I ain't against it. 
I say go for it. I think Dreams has got a lot of trouble. I think it's a hard game to sell, and I wish them the best because it's cool. A lot of people are doing yeah, amazing things. Yeah, I'd love to be. I, I think anything that in, it, it's original, it's something different. You know, it encourages creativity. I would love it to see. I would love to see it be a big success. But the fact that the, the fact that I didn't, I, I thought it was already out. Yeah, <laughs> not a good sign. And that's that, that's sign. the big thing of trying to climb out of the eight ball on that one. Gary, believe it or not. We have a required reading for everybody today. Okay. Uh, it actually kind of ties in. It's going to bookend the show nicely with what you're doing with Stack Up. Oh, nice. This one comes from the Washington Post over there. Alex Andrejev uh, has this headline. Department of Veteran Affairs believes games can help soldiers reconnect, reduce suicide. Here's how. I want to read the first few graphs on this one. After Microsoft CEO uh, Satya Nadella crashed his car into a sand trap in the Xbox One video game Forza, he wondered aloud if it was time to give up. His competitor, Roger Brannon, thought differently. Never give up, Brannon said. That's a Marine, Nadella replied. Brandon, a veteran who served in the armed forces over ha half his life, was playing against Nadella using Microsoft's Adaptive Controller, a video game controller designed for individuals with limited mobility. Brandon, who suffers from neuromuscular disease, ALS, uh, demonstrated the benefits of the device to Microsoft leadership at the VA Medical Center in Washington, D.C. in early October. The controllers, which were released to the market last September, were distributed, to were distributed to 22 veteran rehabilitation centers across the country earlier this month as part of a collaborative effort between the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs and Microsoft to enhance socializing, therapeutic, and rehabilitative practices for veterans through gaming. Great stuff. I think it's great. I don't think we talk enough about, uh, you know, de video games get demonized a whole lot in the mainstream media. We don't talk enough about... Uh, the healing and therapeutic qualities 100%. of video games. I was talking about it, you know, the first time I ever saw Gears of War in action was when I was working at the Columbia Daily Tribune after college, and I went to, I was covering this Marine who had been shot by a sniper, and everybody thought was going to die, didn't die, he came back, I covered his re rehabilitation, and his doctor was like, you should play video games. And he was playing Gears, and it was the first time I ever saw anybody play Gears, right, to try to get the hand-eye coordination back and stuff. So it's awesome that that not only was happening back then, which now is, what, 13, 14 years ago. But on top of that, that, you know, Microsoft with the adaptive controller is working with the government, oh, working with the VA yeah. hospitals to make this happen. Terrific stuff. Really interesting to read a lot more over there. Again, uh, Washington Post, uh, D Department of Veterans Affairs, believes games can help soldiers reconnect, reduce suicides. Here's how. Gary, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later. On YouTube.com slash kind of funny games and Rooster Teeth podcast services. Uh, Kebabs points out that um, I think it was second or third reference. I screwed it up and mi mismatched people. Casey works for IGN. Callie works for GameSpot. Oh, okay. I, of course, know that, but I screwed it up when I said it. Uh, Kebabs pops back in and said, when we were like, well, different time. Bethesda wasn't making broken games then. Kebab says, Friend re friendly reminder that Bethesda games were broken in 2012 as well. Remember Skyrim on PS3? I do. Good point. Was that busted? Oh, yeah. But it, it, it turned out it was like, do you? No, it was awesome because it was some weird like thing in the back end that the game remembered like every door you opened, like because it was you know building this living breathing world or whatever. Yeah. And so like it got the data got so big, like you. And it, it was something you wouldn't know. You had to play like forty hours of it, sixty right. hours of it. But it eventually, would, it, it would just some kind crash of the point. game. It, oh. would not, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't run. It was a huge fucking problem. So funny. Um, nanobiologist points out that in our Stadia lineup discussion, Google Stadia is expected to receive 12 more games by the end of the year. Of course. Yeah, but I looked at those as well, and none of those are that compelling. Yeah. Borderlands? Again, it's fucking out already. Yeah. Yeah, there's trouble, yeah. We, and if they would get cross-save, different th story. You know what I mean? That, that would help a lot. Exactly. If I could take the games I already play on the road, like Destiny. Yeah. Like Destiny. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it, it, sooner or later we'll all be doing it. Playing Destiny still? No, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying Destiny does that. So if it was yeah, yeah, benefiting yeah. games that I did, that'd be awesome. Uh, nanobiologist writes in, not a you're wrong, but on the topic of accessibility, Microsoft's do Microsoft to donate money from XO19 ticket sales to gaming charity Special Effect, uh, the Ox Oxfordshire-based charity, played a part in the creation of the Xbox Adaptive Controller, which lets gamers plug in switches. So yeah, there's stuff happening already over there. So there you go. Look at that. It's the ch it is the charitable season. People are trying to call out that I skipped you're wrong. I didn't skip it. Everybody stopped writing in in November with new squat, squat ups. Up. So if you're not going to squat up, that's on you, not on me. I'm no squat up? For no, no squat up. Everybody watch twitch.tv slash Gary Witta. There, we squatted up. There you go. Squat Did up. I'll be on, I'll, I actually, we'll be on tonight, Wednesday night, twitch.tv slash Gary Witta. That's right. Nice. What are you going to play? I uh, don't know yet. Might, play some, might continue the Modern Warfare campaign. Would love oh. to play Jedi, but I've got to wait. 24 hours longer to wait. What would happen if I just fucking played it? Would I get... Who, like, who, they like, would really like, get mad who, at you. Like, are they going to swat me? Like, what would they do? 
I mean, well, I think NDAs we sign and stuff do stuff like that. Oh, like they, 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 they can like, pull me into court or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to do that. I want to do that if I were you. Yeah, it's not worth it, is it? No, not you at all. You can't fight the man. No, you can't. The man always wins. For the law and the law won. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, it's Thursday, and it's crazy. Like I said, Ash Paulson will be doing Games Daily with me. If you're a live viewer, it'll be earlier, 9 a.m.-ish, then the screencast at 10 about Disney+. Plus. Then our inside Xbox watch along at noon. Remember, if you miss it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, it'll be up on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. The Gamescast. All about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will be up Thursday, 9 p.m. Pacific Time, youtube.com slash kind of funny games, podcast services around the globe. Then Friday, Tim joins me to close out the week. Gary. All right. You're a breath of fresh air, and I love you very much. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. One last time, stack up. Space Rocks Red Alert Edition. Uh, all the money, all the proceeds, all the profits go to stack up, helping veterans charities, uh, ve- veterans causes. Yeah. Preventing uh, veteran PTSD and suicide. We love that. We want to support it. Go to legionagary.com. Pick up your copy of Space Rocks Red Alert Edition. Don't play it. Put it on a shelf. <laughs> Merely sit uh, and bask in the glow of knowing that you did uh, a very charitable act by uh, picking it up for a mere $25. Mere 25 bucks. Go do it, ladies and gentlemen. A great gift. Until yeah, next perfect time, time for, for uh, holiday giving as well. You're going to forget. Just go buy this. You know what just I mean? Just get it done now. Get, yeah. get your Christmas shopping done early. Exactly. Be done with it. Wouldn't mom love some space rocks? I think she would. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.